And welcome back to All Over the Map. Thanks for tuning in. On today's episode, we've got news of the day for the 15th of February, 2022. So we're going to play this game. This is a game that we do on a daily basis, typically Monday through Fridays with the occasional weekends. And there are five news topics of the day that, uh, quite frankly, are interesting as it relates to perhaps geography, world events, uh, and things of the like. So with that said, we're going to get into this game. We're going to play this as a um, no time limit moving aloud challenge like we normally do here. We're going to invite you to play along on the news of the day GeoGuessr game here. The link is in the description below, as are the news articles that we will be covering here. So without further ado, let's get right into it and see where the first round takes us. What news event? And look at this. We have got <clears throat> interesting uh, Hatula, Finland. So why are we back in Finland once again, folks? Well, we're in Finland because something interesting has happened with snow and Finland. Let's take a look at it. 60,000 tracks snowshoers create Finland's biggest snow drawing. 13 volunteers spend an entire day creating the artwork. Uh, the outline of the starfish is more than a kilometer long. Uh, that's fascinating there. Um, so anyway, so Finland's largest ever snow drawing was created this past weekend in Hatula, just over 100 kilometers north of Helsinki. The pattern has an average diameter of 220 meters. The center of the work is a starfish with other sea creatures around it. You can see a turtle there, etc. Um, you look at the course, I look at this and see the individual here, how massive this is. It's just phenomenal for me to see something like this. Um, it's very creative things that I like. I love, like this is just, that's pretty cool. So um, 13 folks volunteers from all over Finland spent eight hours on Saturday doing this and um, yeah so it's pretty cool if you want to just take a look here at the pictures again the link is in the description to this uh, news article in the description below let's go find out where Hatula is in Finland so let's take a look 100 the article did say 100 kilometers north of Helsinki so, I think we're up near Hamelina, up this way somewhere. Can we find Hatula? Malina is going south by 10, so we're probably in here somewhere. Hatula, where are you, Hatula? I think it's around here somewhere. I think. There's a Hatula and Pizza Kebab House, the K Market Hatula. And were we this far? I think we were. I think we were up around here. So let's just guess that. Oh, no. I was a little further up, a little further north on this 1,585 yards, 4,993 points. I think the reason why I decided to put that there is because there's an only sign with Hatula on it. So there we go. Snow in Finland. Who would have thought that would have made the news? All right, we're going to go a little west here, and I thought this was another, like, just a fascinating, not the major news events. I know that you probably hear Russia, you hear Ukraine, you hear the truckers, you hear New Zealand, you hear all these mandates, non-mandates, things release, unrelease, all this stuff. It, it can be a little uh, much. I mean, I know that it's important news and all that stuff, don't get me wrong, but part of this is to play the GeoGuessr game, learn a little bit about where these events occur, and I will cover them. Not every day, though. Not like the news. At least we see in the United States. It's it's drones on and on the same articles, the same stuff all the time. So I thought I'd do interesting stuff. That's why the snow in Finland is always interesting. The snow creations, the creativity, uh, some travel things. 
This one is very interesting. This is uh, actually Norway. So we we're in Scandinavia here. Um, just I would say I would say west, but east. No, west of uh, I'm a little confused there. East of where this anyway, west of Finland, east of going east from where this actual boat launched. Let's just get into the article. Enough of west, east, north, south, whatever. Um, so it's interesting. New Hampshire students launched a boat in 2020, and it was just found on the 1st of February in Norway. A six-foot-long rye riptide was packed with photos, fall leaves, acorns, and state quarters, and equipped with the GPS. Here's the actual uh, rye riptide's boat, and what's pretty cool is so you got you know, Americans, middle school students, which is probably anywhere from 12 to 14 year old kids. And they have a soccer or football there, which is always interesting. So you could have had all these sports, got an American flag, but uh, I love how uh, that is taking precedence with a lot of kids, football and soccer. Anyway, a small boat uh, was launched by New Hampshire middle school students and has been found 462 days later, ironically, by a sixth grader, probably the same general age as these kids in New Hampshire in Norway. The 1.8 meter rye riptides boat was decorated with artwork from the kids and equipped with a tracking device that went silent for parts of the journey and was found on the 1st of February in Smola, a small island near Dernes, Norway, the Portsmouth Herald reported Monday. The It had lost a toll and keel on an 8,300 mile journey and it was covered in gooseneck barnacles. Um, and it seems like the school in Norway will plan a call with the uh, middle school or junior high students soon in Rye, New Hampshire. I, this is fascinating. I love this stuff. I'm not too far away from the Atlantic Ocean where I'm currently located. And I've always thought uh, with my kids is to take something like this or a bottle and put some, you know, like a note or message and just you know, put it in the ocean and see where it winds up. I know that this has happened several times where it usually um, on the East Coast of the United States, it winds up in Ireland or stuff. But to get all the way to Norway is pretty, pretty um, interesting for me. So let's take a look at this. Let's see. So this is actually Smola, which is in, in Norway. So let's just take a look at, at this for the moment, right? Typically, if you're launching anything from the Atlantic here, it, it kind of carries with the jet stream up to like Ireland or this part of the world. The fact that it was launched from New Hampshire, which is, let's just take a look where Rye is before we get into this. I just want to, this is why I do this game is to show people where this is, where this, uh, so here's Rye, okay? There's, there's Portsmouth. And I'm guessing they didn't probably, maybe they did, maybe they launched it from here. I'm guessing maybe they launched it, dropped it from a boat out here. Regardless, where they launched it from, it's got to come straight out up and around and carried with the jet stream across the northern Atlantic, right? It, it's got to skip through the Fair Islands, go through this little area here, right? Like, I, I know it's not little, but the grand scheme of things, I'm just surprised that it avoided all this stuff to wind up, up here, not too far away from Molde and Trondheim, up here in the Smola, which is where this is actually located. So I think we're like right around, there's the Joker of Vestmola. Vestmola. So I think we were right about there. Um, yeah, that, that's just a great article, a great uh, story, because um, it's something that and it just interests me. In any case, there we are, Norway. All right, so what do we have here? It looks like Deutschland. Let's see, can we confirm that? Rot House. So we are in Germany. It looks like a nice restaurant, a place you would want to have maybe a pint of lager or maybe tiramisu. I think we might go for a pint of lager. This. Why is this? What's going on in Germany? What news article uh, is going on here? Well, spike champagne in a Bavarian bar leaves one dead and eight sick. There's the police side. One man died and eight other people were hospitalized in serious condition after unknowingly drinking champagne spiked with ecstasy at a bar in Bavaria, German prosecutor said on Monday. The man who died was 52. The others between 33 and 52. Um, yeah, this is just, this is crazy This how this happens. I just saw this. A group of people ordered, shared one bottle of champagne. When police arrived at the ball, bar, they found people lying on the ground with cramps and eight of them had to be, eight, had to be hospitalized. 
the question I had for this when I saw this is, was it in the bottle of champagne or is the bottle open? And there's a lot of, like, these are the articles that I love to, like, read and, and ask and I always come away with, like, five, like, tons of questions, right? Questions are always like, okay, well, it showed it in the champagne, but it was not clear how it got into the bottle, right? So who opened the bottle? <laughs> was it the bartender at the bar? Well, then question him, right? Like, find out everything about him. That leaves out so many different things. This is why sometimes my frustration reading these news articles and these major news organizations, they leave so many things out that want you asking more. I don't know if that's you, if you're like this, but for me, it's definitely something where I'm like, wait a minute, what, what about the bartender? Uh, what about the company that produced the champagne? Where did this come from? And it just leaves nothing other than, I guess, your imagination to go wild on this sort of stuff, which mine does. That's why I put this in here. I thought it was interesting. Spike champagne, it's crazy. It's unfortunate that somebody passed away from it too. You know, keep keep uh, on this. is that that um, That's not a good thing. So where is this in... Let's go back at this article. Let's take a look. Wieden, Germany in Bavaria. So let's take a look where Wieden is. Uh, or Weiden. Weiden, maybe. Um, so... Bavaria is down in this part of the world, right? Obviously, Bayern Munich. But I think, there it is, Wieden. And i not on Google Maps here. This is like a, this is obviously Berlin 5 GmbH. And I think we, Ruff's Burger and Barbecue. Um, I think we were down here somewhere. Stadt Museum Wieden, right there. Yeah, that's where we are. 40 yards, 5,000 points, and spike champagne. So anyway, on to the next round. Oh, and we've got an airport with a lot of airplanes. And this is a massive airport, by the way. As you see, there's palm trees. So yeah, we're in a eh, semi, I guess, semi-tropical area. So we're going to take a look at this. And yeah, there's... Air Asia flight in Malaysia rerouted after snake found on board a plane. So on this Air Asia flight in Malaysia was rerouted after snake was found on the plane. The domestic flight was en route from Kuala Lumpur to Tawu, Ta, Tawau on February 10th when several passengers reportedly realized there was a snake on board the aircraft. A social media, media user shared an image of the snake slithering through the plane's light fixtures. <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, I think the light fixtures are above. So when you press the button to say, hey, I need this or, you know, or I need some more air. There's a snake slithering through there. Really? Like that? that is insane. Um, it was rerouted to the city of Kuching. <laughs> I just saw this. I had to include this on the list. One, you don't get much uh, articles, I guess, so far in this in this game, uh, Malaysia, that part of the world. So I had to include this. But Snakes remind me of this movie, Snakes on a Plane by Samuel L. Jackson. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the flight. We've got snakes falling in this from the light fixture. That's crazy. I'm, I would have... I love to see the video of people on that when they realize there's a plane uh, snake on the plane there. I'm sure it was pure chaos, people screaming and whatnot. So let's find out where this is actually Kuala Lumpur. So the location here is that's the Kuala Lumpur airport uh, in Malaysia. So we'll take a look and find out where Kuala Lumpur airport is. And by the way, it's just I think it's a little ways outside of the city. Yes, it is, or outside of the area of Kuala Lumpur pretty far south to be honest and I think we were on this if we look at the map looking north northeast I think we're about here on the 27 and uh, 510 yards away 4,998 points Kuala Lumpur Malaysia we're gonna get off to the fifth and final round and we got one of my favorite sports skiing she is skiing uh, well, where are we? Well, right out of the bat, we can see Austria and Germany. 
So uh, we got a nice snowy day here. Uh, you don't see this often on any GeoGuessr games where it's currently snowing and people are skiing. I, I could do this every day. I could ski every day. Um, so if, wherever you are around the world, comment down below if you go skiing. And if so, what's your favorite skiing uh, ski area, ski location? Comment down below. Uh, that is the question of the day on News of the Day about skiing. So not necessarily a news article or a news event that has happened in Austria here, but an interesting uh, interesting story, interesting um I guess interesting in the sense that we talk about maps in this game. We play a lot of maps. And I never knew this. I never knew about this town of Jungholz, a ski town stuck in the wrong region. So this is an article by Mike McEheron. Um, a very in-depth article, which i try to include from time to time. I think this is fun for a lot of people to read and explore because that's one of the things on all over the map is we try to explore about different things we didn't know at least myself and here i'll just read a, a brief summary on this an afterthought on the map of austria the exclave of jungholz has carved out its own identity even if the reality for those living there is far from straightforward so the sorg um this is what's interesting about this is no matter the absurdity it's utterly necessary because Jungholz, population of 302, is as Austrian as Vienna or Salzburg, yet is surrounded by Germany on all sides with no road connection to Austria. The only way Austrians in the exclave can reach their homeland is via Bavaria. And well, again, we'll, we'll just I'll just scroll through this. But this geography, the complexity of this, and the fact that it's surrounded, there are oddities that do exist around the world like this. Northwest, I think, are part of Minnesota. That the only way to get to Minnesota is from Canada. But yeah, this town of Jungholz, villagers must drive through Bavaria to get back to Austria, which is cra crazy. So it talks here about the treaty between Austria and Bavaria, about the history around it. Um, yeah, it's just it's just it's a great article. So it's a good read. This is. I'll include these things from time to time. But I wanted to see this. What, what What's up with Jungholz, right? The one thing they don't include in this article is a map of it, which I thought was, I don't think they did. No, they don't include a map, which I think for a guy like me who loves maps, why didn't you include a map? So let's take a look at, at on the map where Jungholz is. Um, so we'll take a look. Austria in... So if we zoom out a little bit, you see this little blip here, right? Well, if you explore closer, it's like, what what's going on here, right? What's going on with this thing here? This little piece. There's Jungholz, all right? So you come in closer, it's like, what is going on with this border? And then and then if you explore a little closer, it doesn't talk about it in the article, but like there's the Schorgstrolfen, the top of the mountain, I guess. You have this little, 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 little cut through where you can, I guess, like a trail just walk through there, even though this road doesn't go through. So in order to get to Austria from Jungholz, it looks like you have to go out here to the 310. Seems like the only way you could do it. I don't even know if you can cross. Well, I guess you could cross through. Could you cross through here? No, that ends there. Yeah, you have to come all the way down here to 310 to the 308 and then back. So I didn't do any Google Maps on this, but this is crazy. I mean, this is... These are one of these things I did, never knew about. Um, hopefully we'll get some of these other unique geographical oddities in the world on GeoGuessr and all over the map. But let's click there. This is ski area. And talking about skiing, we'll go through a quick metal count, I think, on this. Uh, 121 yards. <laughs> Didn't get it uh, close there. But the ski area, uh, let's see what we got here. 24,990. We went from... Finland to Norway to Germany to Austria in Germany for the lack of a better term and Malaysia with snakes on the plane let's take a quick look I know the United States well for me beat Finland in hockey women's hockey that is women's hockey 
I think, to advance to the gold medal. I have not been following the Olympic Games like I have in years past. I'm not sure why. I think it's because of the time difference in the United States. Uh, I have a hard time watching things not live. But in any case, let's take a look at this. Norway is just clearly out ahead of everybody. And somebody commented yesterday that 5 million people, it is, it, I mean, that's amazing. You have 26 medalists from Norway. And that is that just blows my mind. Um, so anyway, it's not in order here. It's order by gold medals, but Russia in second. And I don't know if this is updated or not, but Canada and United States tied for third. Not that the medals are a big deal. Finland in 17th. Australia, things have kind of stayed the same. Do we have any? Latvia and Estonia have won a medal uh, since yesterday. So that's our Olympic Games of the day. Also, I will include this on News of the Day. We will talk a little bit. Champions League, Champions League is back um, today with PSG playing in Manchester City. So we might include that as well if there's an interest there. But again, news of the day. If you have any news articles, you want to include anything, you want me to cover anything in this game or add it, either comment down below or send me an email at all over the map 23 at gmail.com. Would, uh, would appreciate that. And uh, yeah, that's it. So. As always, thanks for your support. If you hit like this video, hit the like button. Share this with your friends. Hit the subscribe if you haven't want to grow this channel. Want to continue to do this in a day and day basis. Appreciate each and every one of you. Until next time, cheers.